Okay, let me start. Uh, today we will have 6.4 and very likely with 7.1 uh, to be covered. And 6.4 will be in your test three on Wednesday. Okay, this is on the easy side. That's why I dare enough to actually put it in your test three. Mm. Uh, in the past, we have y. We have had y as a function of x, and the notation usually y as a function of x. Well, of course, sometimes we also write it as y equals to fx. Okay, now in this section, we will have a new approach where x and y are function of t. And this t will be called parameter. Now, uh, give you uh, some uh, uh, another point of view. We call t uh, because we want to call uh, we want it to represent time. So uh, basically, instead of only get the curve, let's say in three dimension, only get a curve, we can actually say more that at one at what time. Uh, we have the position of uh, the position of the item or the satellite uh, where, okay? So uh, at time equals to zero, maybe here, time equals to one here, time equals to two here, and so on and so forth, okay? So not only we know uh, the, the trajectory or the, the curve, we can also tell at what time where the location of the satellite or the item be. Now let's say for example, let's say for example, let's say for example, uh, we want let uh, x as a function of t be uh, t plus one and y as a function of t to be, uh, let's say, t squared. And we want to have uh, t greater or equals to zero. Let's say we have something like that. Now then, uh, to graph this, to graph this, there are two methods to graph. Two methods to graph. The first method is by plotting. And that's what I will teach you first. The second method is by eliminating parameter. Okay, I teach you plotting first to have a good feeling about that. Okay, the plotting method is done by doing the following. I would like you to create a table. Okay, and then you do this together with me though, okay? When t equals to zero, what's the x and y? When t equals to one, what's the x and y? So on and so forth. Okay, this is t, this is x, this is y. When t equals to zero, t equals to one, two, three, four, five, let's say. Okay, don't do too much. Then let's see what happened to the y. Okay, when t equals to zero, I mean the x, the x is one, the y will be zero. So the coordinate correspond to that will be one comma zero, correct? That's the coordinate correspond to that. When t equals to one, the x is two, the y is one. So the coordinate correspond to that is two comma one. When at, uh, when t equals to 2, the x is 3, the y is 4, this is 4, 9, this is 5, 16, and 6, 5, and of course so on and so forth, right? Okay, now I will plot this coordinate, I will plot this coordinate. Uh, let me get my graphing paper in a second.
this one for a while. Here. Okay. Now then, uh, let's see. One comma zero. Let me use blue color. One comma zero is located here. Two comma one is located here. Three comma four is located here. Four comma nine. Oops, so high up there. Five comma sixteen and so on and so forth. Okay, so you will see the graph is actually start from this point and uh, move in that direction. Okay, in fact, we can say more that when time the t equals to zero, it's here. This is when t equals to one. This is when t equals to two. This is when t equals to three. Okay, and so on and so forth. Now, the thing with this technique, plotting technique, you may get the first couple of points, but you may not get the, the good feeling about what the shape of the graph look like. Okay, so now it's not wrong though, it's not wrong. In fact, to be good with a uh, graphing parametric equation, you need to know both, not only one of them. Okay, now second, suppose I have a uh, eliminating parameter. The idea is, the idea is, uh, I try to solve for t, a t equals to something in terms of x or in terms of y, and then put that into the other variable. Like for example, here, I can make uh, basically x equals to t plus one, right? Okay, therefore, t equals to x minus one. Now then, you use that t equals to x minus 1 into here. And this will become x minus 1 squared. Okay, so uh, then the graph of these, the graph of these parametric equation, therefore, uh, looks like that function. Okay, so this is this is the graph of this is the graph of y square y equals to x squared. Move one unit to the right. Okay, so the graph actually looks like this. the graph of y equals to x minus 1 squared looks like this. Okay. Now the thing is, uh, what happened with this uh, eliminating parametric met uh, method? You can see the curve, but you cannot really tell where it starts and where it ends. Uh, as you see from what we have up there, okay, the graph of this parametric equation here, only part of this red, uh, this curve in red. Okay, maybe I want to write it. Uh, maybe I use red. Note that the graph. equation may on maybe only part of the equation obtained by 
eliminating parameter. Okay, now as you can see, when we then start off, when t equals to zero, it's here, t equals to one is here, t equals to two is here, and so on and so forth, right? And the curve actually starts from here. The curve actually starts from here and going that way. Okay, so I need to combine, I need to combine eliminating parameter to get the shield, and then using the plotting to get the direction. Okay, and notice that this branch here, this branch here, this part here, is actually not, not part of the curve. But by, by graphing it in full, then we can tell, oh, you know what, it's, it's actually part of a parabola. Okay, it's actually part of the parabola. Now, uh, it seems like when you take a look in our textbook, our textbook actually focus on one type or two types of uh, parametric uh, equations, uh, but they are actually focusing on something important though. Okay, yeah. uh, things that you will see a lot in calculus 2 later on, and also in pre-calculus. Okay, let's do one more problem. Let's do one more problem. And then uh, I do the type of question in our textbook. Okay, this type, the following situation. Example two, uh, let the curve C be given by X equals to two sine T and Y be given by three sine T. Now, suppose I eliminate the parameter right away. Okay, suppose I eliminate the parameter, then I get x equals to two sine t, therefore sine t is x over two, right? While y is three sine t, which if, if I substitute there, I'll get three times uh, x over two. So that's 1.5x. Now, of course, then we think, oh, you know what? The graph will look like, the graph will look like a line. Put it here. The graph will look like a line, send uh, the line and then the y-intercept is zero, zero. The slope is three over two. Up three, run two, up three, run two, down three, back up two, down three, back up two. So it seems like the curve. Go on there. Look at cut. Uh, why so hard to run? Okay, this is good. Okay, seems like that's the curve, but here's the problem. Here's the problem. If you look back to this x equals to two sine t, what is the range for x? you will see that x will be between negative two to two only, right? Okay, and then as for the y, as for the y, the y will be from negative three to three only. Well, because sine t has range from negative one to one. Okay, so by using uh, eliminating parameter, we have the, that line, but uh, as you can see, the x and y only move from, uh, it's limited move, okay? 
which if I put into the picture more, <coughs> uh, the graph is actually like this here. The graph is actually only here. Let me make it here. This is the graph. Instead of being a line, the graph is actually a segment. Okay, the graph is actually a segment. Now you can think of it this way. When t equals to zero, x and y equals to zero. This is when t equals to zero. Okay, when t is pi over two, it's here. This is when t equals to pi over two. When t equals to pi, it comes back here. When t is three pi over two, it goes here. When t equals to two pi, it's here. Uh, as if as if I'm saying that the graph is actually going this way, it goes this that way, and come back and then go here and then come back and back and forth. Okay, so the graph is like this, moving this way. Forever. Okay, okay. So so you see that the graph is not the whole line uh, y equals to 1.5x line okay but only part of that okay now of course it is possible we can have uh, we eliminate the parameter and it turns out that the resulting graph is the graph for the whole uh, for uh, the whole parameter, okay? And not only part of that. Uh, it's possible, it's possible. Okay, now from these two examples, I show you that uh, eliminating parameter will give us the shape. And on the top of that, when you do plotting, you will see the direction, okay? The direction of how uh, the curve being in motion. Now, let's go to what our textbook has. I will start with this, the basic one, example for uh, x equals to cosine t and y equals to sine t. If I want to eliminate the parameter, you will see that x squared plus y squared equals to cosine squared t plus sine squared t that's equals to 1. Okay, so this is actually a unit circle. This is actually a unit circle. <clears throat> and you can see, try to see the direction when t equals to zero, the x is one. The y is zero, so this is when the t equals to zero. When t equals to pi over two, the x will be for sine pi over two that zero, y pi over two is one. So this is when t equals to pi over two. So it seems like the graph is actually going this way. Now, as you can see, the x which is cosine t uh, has maximum value one, minimum value negative one, right? And if, actually, if you trace this further, you will see uh, that the curve is actually the whole circle, not part of that, okay? Not only part of that, but it's actually the whole circle. Now, however, however, not only we get the whole circle as the 
the curve, we can actually tell also at the same time at what time where's the coordinate located. Okay, so not only the shape, but also where to find uh, where at what time we get the coordinate, which coordinate. Okay, now <clears throat> this is the actually the one that uh, you have to memorize. Uh, let me ask you to take some time to see that the following example gives you the same shape but different timing, in fact, different direction. So x equals to sine t, y equals to cosine t. And you will see that you will get x squared plus y squared equals to 1. Uh, therefore, it will look like a unit circle. But I want you to give me the direction. I want you to give me the direction. So where do you start? Where do you end? Ah, uh, this is frustrating. When t equals to zero, where is it located? When t equals zero, oh, you work it out then. You work it out. When t equals to zero, uh, the x is zero, the y is one. So this is the position when t equals to zero. So when t equals to i over two, the x will be one, the y will be zero. So it's here, this is when t equals to i over two. So you can see that it goes in this direction. When t equals to i, get x equals to zero, yet the y is negative one. This i, when t equals to pi, the coordinate is zero, negative one. When t equals to three pi over two, we get x equals to negative one. The y equals to zero. So it's here. Okay, so that's the direction and the timing also and the coordinate at those time. Now notice that from here, example three and example four, note. From example, 
you see three or four or four or five. Example four and, and example five. And then example five, you see the curve may be resolved. from different parameterization. Okay, so the curve may be the same. However, the timing may be different. However, Different timing. Different timing. Different key. Give us is different position. Okay, so to come up with the same curve, you can have different parameterization. However, to have the correct timing, then it may not be the case. In fact, in fact, I can tell you this. So I can tell you this that uh, for this example five C, example five uh, B. Okay, the following parameterization will give us the same picture: uh, sine t square and y equals to 4 sine t squared. It will give us the same graph. However, same curve, but you see that the t squared actually increases faster, right? Compared to t, okay? But uh, the position moves Faster, faster and faster. Okay. So let's say when t equals to zero, it is located here. Uh, when t equals to one, it is located here. You see, when t equals to one, when t equals to one is located here because t is less than uh, the pi over two, right? Okay, but when t equals to two, it's already here. Okay. For, for that one, for the parameterization I just gave you, for the parameterization I just gave you, uh, x equals to sine t squared, and y equals to four sine t squared. Okay, when t equals to zero, the position is zero one. Okay, when t equals to one, then the position will be uh, sine one or sine one. Okay, so it's before pi over two. Before pi over two. However, when t equals to two, notice that. Uh, this is more than pi already. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, when t equals to 2, then I will get sine 4, right? Which is more than 3.14 and cosine 4. Okay, so let's say the t equals to 2 is here. And when t equals to 3, that's sine 9 or sine 9. That's way more than 2 pi. 2 pi is 6 point something, right? So t equals to 2 is here, t equals to 2 is here, t equals to 3 maybe already here, okay, somewhere around here. So it goes slow and then a lot faster. Okay, because square function actually, square function actually uh, increase faster and faster compared to t. Okay, now, so yes, we still get the same graph, but the way the point move along this curve it's actually move faster and faster like that. Or of course you can also slow it down, okay? 
So the curve may be the same, but the position is different at different timing. Now, the way I did that my example 5e actually make the position, the point on that curve actually move faster and faster. Now, going back to our textbook then, okay, the question I did just now is actually question number one. Yes, question number one, uh, the parameter is x equals to sine t, y equals to cosine t. Okay, now that gives us the same graph to, it gives us the same graph to uh, our example two, I think, or example three, I don't remember, I think our example three, uh, it gives us the same graph, x equals to cosine t, y equals to cosine t. Yeah, both of them give us unit circle. Okay, now how about number four? In our textbook, we have x equals to full cosine t and y equals to full sine t. What will the graph look like? There are two points of view to answer this question. The first point of view is to eliminate the parameter. You see that cosine t is x over 2 and sine t is y over 2. Okay, and we know cosine squared t plus sine squared t equals to 1. Right? Okay, therefore x over squared plus y over 2 squared equal to 1. That's x squared over 4 plus y squared over 4 equals to 1. Uh, that gives us x squared plus y squared equals to 4. That's a circle centered at origin. with radius 2. Okay, that's uh, eliminating, uh, eliminate the parameter method. Eliminate parameter. Okay, now another point of view, another point of view, another point of view is transformation point of view. Transformation. Transformation point of view, basically uh, seeing the problem this way. Okay, originally you have x equals to 4 sine t and y equals to sine t. We know that gives us unit circle. Now, having two in front of that, it's basically stretch. Uh, by two units horizontally. Not by two units, uh, by two times. And having the two here, uh, stretch vertically, stretch by two times vertically. As if I'm saying the following, as if I'm saying the following. Okay, originally we have a unit circle, right? Originally we have a unit circle. Let's say we have a one a unit circle here. This is a unit circle. Okay. Now then, 
then when I say I stretch two units to horizontally, I basically say that I basically say that this part here, this part here, okay, I will stretch by two units to the right and also two units to the left. Oops. No, that's not what I mean. Two units to the left. Okay, and then vertically we stretch by two times up and down. Okay, so instead of having a unit circle that we have earlier, we stretch, multiply this by two, multiply this by two, multiply this by two, multiply this by two. Okay, that's the approach. Now, I prefer to see it from the second method. I prefer to see it from the second method, but the first method is still a, a more analytic way to look at that. Okay, now let's do one more problem. Let's do one more problem. Example six. Mm, number 12. Well, number 12. So I have x equals to 2 plus 3 sine t, and the y is 1 plus 3 four sine t. Okay. Sine t for sine t give us a unit circle. Now, multiplying each the sine and cosine t will give us circle with radius three. You basically stretch that horizontally and vertically by three. Okay, now then this part here, this part here moves three, I'm sorry, two units in x direction and one unit in y direction. <clears throat> okay, so suppose I get my coordinate system back. Let me put it. Let me put it. Let's say I have this coordinate system. Now the center will now be at two comma one. This is the center. Okay, and it will go three units to the right, left, right, three units up, down. So the circle will be, let me try, the circle will be like this. Okay, and I know that it will move in this direction. That's the direction that we have earlier. Okay, for sine t, for sine t. And this is when t equals to zero, t equals to pi over two, t equals to pi, t equals to three pi over two. Okay. Now, the thing you don't see in your textbook, though, but I did ask in my old test, is, it there for now, is what happened if I make this number seven, for example, uh, x equals to 
negative 3 plus 2 cosine t <clears throat> and y equals to uh, let's say 4 plus uh, sine t. Now, this part here will give us unit circle. Now, however, the stretch are not equal. The stretch horizontally by two, but we don't stretch vertically. Okay, and then the center later on, the center of that circle will be negative three comma four, because you move three units to the left and four units up. Okay, move three to the left, and four up. Okay, so if I try to sketch that graph, it will be it will be the center is negative three comma four. It's here, okay. But then supposed to be unit circle, right? Supposed to be unit circle. Let me draw the unit circle here. Supposed to be a unit circle. Okay, but I stretch the horizontally two units to the right, so also to the left. I don't move that up and down uh, vertically. Okay, so my uh, my circle now after I stretch here and there will become an ellipse. Yeah, you can say ellipse is basically a circle be, uh, that is stretched unevenly, vertically and horizontally. Okay, now I will give you a break, but I would like you to sketch this at the same time. For example, example, a sketch uh, this curve x equals to uh, 2 plus 4 cosine t and y equals to negative 3 plus 3 sine t. Okay, that should take you only around 5 minutes. Okay, that, get the coordinates, the center, and then how far you go left, right, how far you go up, down. Okay, and then uh, sketch the ellipse. Okay, together with your break, we come back at 8, uh, I think 8.20 is good. 8.15. Now 8.20, yes, ma'am. Uh, the center will be the center will be two, two negative three two negative three and then from there we go four to the left right four to the left right and three up down so the curve is approximately like this That's what it looks like approximately. Now, you may wonder about Thomas. Uh, you seems to do it by uh, the following pattern that this will tell us the center. And this will tell us how you stretch left, right, and up, down. And this guy is the unit circle. That's true. That's true. But I want to show you how we get that uh, ellipse equation by converting that. Now you will see that, let me write the, the function again, 
x equals to 2 plus 4 cosine t and the y is negative 3 plus 3 sine t. Now, solve for cosine t. This will be x minus 2 over 4 equals to cosine t. And this guy here will be y plus 3 over 3 equals to sine t. Now, then because cosine squared t plus sine squared t equals to 1, then we get x minus 2 over 4 squared plus y plus 3 over 3 squared equals to 1. Now, this is x minus 2 over 16, squared over 16, plus y plus 3 squared over 9 equals to 1. Now, this is the equation. This is the equation of an ellipse centered at 2 comma negative 3. Okay, you move two units to the right and three units down. Okay, and uh, four units left, right? Four units left, right? Okay. And then three units up down. Okay, so it gives us actually the same graph. So either we do it from a transformation point of view or eliminating, eliminating parameter point of view, both of them will give us the same result. Okay. Now, I will stop there for this section, your suggested homework for 6.4. Suggested homework for 6.4 will be, let's just start from number five, I guess, from number five to number uh, 13. Okay, again, this 6.4 will be in your test. Will be in test three. Okay, now I go on to chapter seven. In chapter seven, we will learn uh, triangles. We move to chapter seven, seven point one. And in this seven point one, we will learn the law of science. Okay, now before I explain the law of science, derive the formula, uh, I would like to define a terminology first. The terms uh, solving a triangle. Solving a triangle, what it means. Now, a triangle consists of a triangle consists of six parts. Okay, let's say we have triangle ABC. Triangle ABC. Let's say this is A, this is B, this is C, okay? Now, uh, angle A is the opposite of side A. Angle B is opposite of side B. Angle C is opposite for side C, 
Okay, now from here you see that a triangle consists of six parts, six angles, six, uh, I mean three angles, angles A, B, C, and three sides, side A, B, C. Okay, now when we say solve a triangle, solve a triangle means to get the values for all six six components okay that's what it means to solve a triangle now in the past we actually did something similar to this already we solve a right triangle uh, when we solve a right triangle, uh, of course, then one of the angle is uh, 90 degrees. Okay, let's let's actually review that a little bit. Let's do that. Again. Let's say, for example, let's say, for example, uh, let triangle ABC be a right triangle, uh, uh, right angle. At C. And let's say uh, angle A, angle A is angle A, B, let's say 35 degrees, and side B is 7 centimeters. Of course, it would be helpful if we can if we can draw the triangle, right? Oops, not that one. Okay, sketch a triangle. Let's say this is angle C, where you get the right angle. The okay, angle A, thirty-five degrees, and then side B. That side B must be here is seven centimeters. Okay, now then to solve the triangle, I need to find angle A, angle B, angle C, side A, side B, side C. Of course, we already know angle A that's 35 degrees, side B is seven centimeters, and Angle C is a right angle, so automatically that's 90 degrees. Okay, now then, which do you think is something we can compute right away? Easy. Angle B, right? Now angle B, A plus B plus C should be 180 degrees, right? 35 degrees, plus B plus Y plus 90 degrees is 180 degrees. So B plus 125 degrees equals to 180 degrees. So B equals to subtract by 125, that's 55 degrees. Okay. So I put that in, B is 55 degrees. Now then, from there, what can I do? Can I find, let's say, uh, let's find site C. This is site C here. Okay, site C. What relates site C, 35 degrees and 7? Now, always try your best to use uh, the information that they gave right. us instead of rounding. Okay, cosine. Cos cosine, okay, so C related by cosine. Cosine A equals to uh, side B over side C. Cosine 35 degrees equals to 7 over C. C times cosine 35 degrees 
it is 7, so C equals to 7 over cosine 35 degrees. Now give me the number, do it on your calculator please. I get 8.5454 foot. Of course, the unit is centimeter. Do you get the same answer? Yeah. Okay, good. So I get 8.5454 centimeters. Okay. And then to find A, to find A, I look at that again. Oh, what relates a side A with is 35 degree and 7 centimeters? Tangent. Tangent, okay. So tangent A equals to A over B. Tangent 35 degrees equals to A over 7. So 7 times tangent 35 degrees equals to 8. 7 tangent 35 degrees give me 4 point, 4 point 9 0 1 4 5 centimeter. 4.90145 centimeter. Okay, so we have one example of what we meant by solving a triangle. And you did this before, as I remember. Uh, you did some, some work like this even in your test one, as I remember. Okay, now we want to go into a situation we will go into a situation when it is not a right triangle. Okay, what if we are dealing with a, uh, a triangle which is not a right triangle? Then how do we solve that? Okay, now to solve that we will rely on two, uh, two laws. Uh, we will use uh, in this 7.1, we will learn law of signs. And in 7.3, we will see law of cosines. Okay, now, one of the issues you will encounter later on, Thomas, how do I know which laws or which formula should I use? Which formula uh, should I use? Uh, this is the hint, and actually, I actually get this hint from my instructor. Uh, this is the hint. We use law of signs if, of course, uh, first the angle, angle, no right angles. Because if we have right angles, that's actually uh, basically chapter one or chapter two case. No right angles. Okay. And second, one column complete. I think I should say one pair complete. One pair complete. Pair is no. Now, what I meant is this. Remember, I wrote it this way earlier. It's angle A and side A, angle B and side B, angle C and side C. Okay. Now, you will be able to use law of sign if you either know this pair or, or this pair or this pair. Okay. If you have one pair known, then you can use law of sign. Okay, now let's derive what is law of sine first. Law of sine says law of the law of sine.
the law of sine says that sine a over a equals to sine b over b equals to sine c over c. Now, you can actually see the proof in our textbook. Okay, but I will prove that using slightly different method. The proof. Oh, hold on. I think I showed you that proof before or not. Uh, I guess not yet. It's not in this class. Then I have to prove that using textbook method. Okay, I have to prove, uh, prove that using textbook method. Uh, we will, I will look at this triangle. Let's uh, have this triangle here. Okay, let's say this is angle A and this is angle B. Okay, and then the altitude, the altitude, let me use another color for the altitude. The altitude is here. Right? The altitude is here. This is the altitude. So it should form a right triangle, a right angle here. Well, the altitude is also called the height. Now, this is what side is this? B. That's side B, and this one is side A. Right? Now notice that the height, notice that the height over B is sine A, right? So this part here, you look at this triangle. Look at that right triangle. Now, on the other hand, for the right triangle on the right hand side, you have sine B equals to H over A. Now then, because of that, then the H according to the left hand equation H is B sine A. And according to the formula on the right, that would be A sine B. Okay. Now notice that that is the cross multiply of sine A over A equals to sine B over B. Now applying the same thing, applying the same concept. We will get uh, the ratio sine A over A equals to sine B over B equals to sine C over C. Now, uh, with some geometry background, then you will see we can solve a triangle using law of sine if two sides and one corresponding, uh, if two angles and one corresponding side is known. Okay, so there are two cases. There are two cases, two cases uh, when uh, law of sine is applicable. If you know 
two angles. If you know two angles. And one corresponding side. Sometimes they call that uh, angle side angle, isn't it? Actually, angle angle side. That's the terminology in. Uh, that's the terminology in geometry. The other we will learn this in seven point one. This is in section seven point one. Now the other case is when you have two sides. And one corresponding angles. Now, that is called a uh, side side angle case. We see that in section 7.2. Okay, 7.1, 7.2 actually deal with. Uh, the same law of science, but you will see the way we treat them, even though using the same formula, they are quite different. Okay, let's start. For example, let's say uh, a pick question from number two. Number two on page 324. A is 80 degrees, B is 30 degrees, and then side B is 14. Find side A. By the way, can we find side angle C? Yes. Just yeah, should be, huh? But once you get angle C later on, you should be able to find side C. Is it right? Yes. Okay. Now let's go back. Let's go back. Uh, I will first answer the question in the book: is to find uh, side A first, and then I will augment. I will extend this question to find side uh, angle C and side C. Okay. So let's answer the question first. So solution. Notice that we can use a law of sine because we have this pair, right? Once you have one column, one pair, then you can use law of sine, okay? Now then, uh, it will be sine A over A equals to sine B over B. That's to sine my, find my side A. Now, sine 80 degrees, over A equals to sine 30 degrees over 14. Now cross multiply. Don't use calculator too early. Don't use a calculator too early. Okay, because you don't want to have compounded rounding error. Cross multiply first. I use CM here. I get 14 sine 80 degrees equals to A times sine 30 degrees. Okay, so A equals to 14 sine 80 degrees over sine 30 degrees. Okay, then you use your calculator. Can you help me using your calculator? What will A equal to? Twenty seven point five seven four six two. Five seven four six two. Good. Okay, they say this is 14 centimeters, 
so the unit here should also be centimeters. Okay, so we get that uh, answer for side A. Let me use another color. This is 27.574.62 centimeters. Okay, now let's go on. Uh, how to find angle C? How to find angle C? Well, we know that A plus B plus C equals to 180 degrees. Actually, in a triangle, once you know two angles, then you know the third one. Okay? So 80 degrees plus 30 degrees plus C equals to 180 degrees. 110 degrees plus C equals to 180 degrees. So C equals to 70 degrees. Right? C equals to now 70 degrees. Now let me ask you to uh, do this. Find side C. You try. I give you five minutes. Now three minutes is good enough. Okay, let's continue. So I will use uh, sine B over B equals is to, equal to sine C over C. Okay, and then I'm cutting numbers. This is sine 30 degrees over 14 equals to sine 70 degrees over C. Okay, now then cross multiply, I get C sine 30 degrees equals to 14 sine 70 degrees. So C equals to 14 sine 70 degrees over sine 30 degrees. So what do you get? 26.31139. Can anybody else confirm? Correct. Okay, so that's 26.31139 centimeter. Okay, that's it for this uh, one question. Let's go on. You try to do one problem. Uh, we do it together. Number 10. Number 10. They say A is 33 degrees. C is 82 degrees. B is 18 centimeters. And find C. But I guess we will be able to find A also, right? Yeah. Do we have a pair here? No, no. but we can make one with, uh, with, with B. Yes, if we so add them even, up to 180. Yeah, even though we don't have a, a pair, but we can find it uh, ourselves, right? So let's find that B. So first, find B. You do it. Fast forward, what do you get? Sixty-five degrees. Sixty-five degrees. Okay, good. So this is sixty-five degrees. And then let's answer the question they want us to do first. We will answer side C. Okay, I give you three minutes. Sign B over B equals to sine C over C. And then sine 65 degrees over 18, is it centimeter? Yes, centimeter. Yes. Equals to sine 82, 82 degrees 
over C and then cross multiply sine C sine 65 degrees equals to 18 sine 82 degrees. Okay, so C equals to 18 sine 82 degrees over sine 65 degrees. And then we use calculator. What do you get? 19.66752. Anybody else can confirm? Yeah. Okay, so C is 19.66752 centimeters. Okay, now actually using the same idea, we will be able to find side A, is it right? Okay, sine A over A equals to sine B over B. Sine 33 degrees over A equals to sine 65 degrees over, four, over 18. Cross multiply 18 sine 33 degrees equals to A sine 65 degrees. So 18 sine 33 degrees over sine 65 degrees is equal to A. Then Use calculator 10.81697 centimeters. Endpoint 816 eight, 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 nine, 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 eight, nine, 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 Okay, that's for number 10. Now let's go into application problem. Let's say, for example, we do number 28. Now don't worry, this 7.1 will not be in your test 3. Your test 4 will be chapter 7, chapter 8. That's your test 4. Okay, uh, but not test, test 3. So this is not in your test uh, this Wednesday. Uh, it will be in your test 4. Number 28, angle of elevation. A woman entering an outside glass elevator on the ground floor of the hotel glances up to the top of the building across the street. So let's say this lady here is going to into a, uh, the elevator at the outside. Okay, and glances up to the building across the street. Yeah. Let's say across the street, there's another building. Okay, and notice that the angle of elevation is 48 degrees. So angle of elevation refers to the angle from the horizontal going up so this is 48 degrees okay now she rides the elevator up three floors let's say it's here so that's 60 feet okay so the distance here is 60 feet. And finds the angle of elevation is now 32 degrees. So if this is the flat line, angle of elevation now is 32 degrees. The question is, how tall is the building across the street? So the question is, 
What is this? Let me say this is T. Okay, let's say that's T. Now, uh, try not to attack the situation directly there. So you sketch that first, and after you finish the sketching, you redraw it with only triangles, with only a triangle. Okay, I try to redraw it. <clears throat> okay, now we know that this is 60 degrees. This is 48 degrees. Do you mean 60 feet? Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. Uh, 60 feet. That's right. So 60 feet there. 60 feet here. And the angle here is 32 degrees. Right? Okay, that's the angle. Uh, the one in question is the height here. We use red color, or maybe blue. We want to find the height here. <clears throat> okay, here's the plan. Uh, if this is 48 degrees, can you tell me what is this here? Ninety. Uh, it's going to be ninety degrees. Forty-two degrees. Forty-two degrees. Ninety minus forty-eight. Right. This is forty-two degrees. Okay. Now, how about this angle here? You see, it looks like this. It looks like this. One hundred forty-eight. Huh? One hundred forty-eight. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. You see, this is 32. This is 90 degrees. So what is that in total? 122. 122. 122 degrees. Okay, so let's call this vertex A and vertex B. Can you find vertex C? A is 42. B is 122, find vertex C. Now we know that side C in the triangle is 60 feet. Okay, now can you find side C, uh, angle C? Just tell me yes or no. Yeah. Yes, we can, right? So, in fact, that will be our first step. Now, after that, uh, here's the plan. To find the height here, call this T here, the find the T there. Notice that I have a right triangle here. This right triangle, this right triangle. You see that this right triangle here? Yes. Okay, so if I know, if I know if I know this side, if I know this side, if I know this side, I can find that T. Right? Okay, if I know that side, I will be able to find the T. Now, my question to you is, uh, what side is this? What do you call this side? Side B. That's side B. Okay, so after you got after you get angle C, get side B. Okay, now then later on using B and T and sine A. You sine A equals to T over B. Okay, now sine forty. Actually, not sign A. Uh, I have to correct that. It's still A, but it's more into the 48 degrees instead of 42 degrees. Sign 48 degrees equals to T over whatever you get uh, from B. 
okay so t equals to what you feel you get from b times sine 48 degrees now that's the plan that's the plan that's the plan okay now let's see uh, what's the angle for our uh, angle c 16 degrees 16 degrees This is yeah. 16 degrees, but you still need to show the work though. Okay, you still need to show the work. A plus B plus C equals to 180 degrees, blah, blah, blah. Give me some BS, uh, get 16 degrees. Okay, then to find side B, then we use sine B over B equals to sine C over C. Sign 122 degrees over D equals to sign 16 degrees over 60. Fast forward, that's B equals to 60 sign 122 degrees over sign 16 degrees. So B equals to 184.60083 feet. Now and then uh, using that to find T. This is sine 48 degrees equals to T over 184.60083. Okay. So T equals to 184.60083. Point six zero zero eight three sine forty eight degrees. I get one hundred thirty seven point one eight five one five one eight five one five. Okay, uh, that's for uh, is seven point one. Seven point two will be a lot more complicated, unfortunately. Uh, that's why I need you to know handle this first uh, before uh, Monday next week. Okay, Monday next week you should be done with the seven point one. You should be good with that. Suggested homework for seven point one. will be number one to number 17. Just do every other odd. Okay. And then number 25. Number point seven. I think that's good enough. Yeah, I think that's good enough. 